Welcome to our sixth form virtual open evening. Tonight, you're going to hear from some of our staff and students about life at Doverbrooks. We'll begin our open evening with a welcome from Doverbrooks principal, Jonathan Cuff, followed by an introduction to the sixth form from our head of school, Alistair McPherson. Then we'll hear from our deputy head of academic, Andrew Colclough, who will give an overview of our academic approach before returning to our head of school, Alistair, oh no, sorry, before returning to our head of pastoral, Ellie, who will talk about pastoral care in the sixth form. The next presentation will be from our head of boarding, Felisa Diaz, about our sixth form boarding options. Unfortunately, our director of sport and activities, Jonathan Richards, is unable to join us this evening, having lost his voice. So instead, we will be rejoined, no, we will be joined by um, uh, Andrew Gillespie, who will be talking about our co-curricular activities options. And then our head of admissions and registry, Anthony Bounds, will discuss the admissions journey for the sixth form. We're also delighted to be joined by four of our sixth form students this evening. We have Agnes, Brendan, Emily and Will, who will be taking part in a student panel discussion and sharing what it's really like to study here with us at Doverbrooks. And finally, we'll have a Q&A session with all of our speakers. If you have any questions during today's event, please submit these using the question box and we'll aim to cover as many of these as we can during the Q&A session at the end. So now, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Jonathan to open tonight's event. Over to you, Jonathan. Thanks, Lisa. Um, good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to our online open event for our sixth form here at Doverbrooks. Uh, I do hope that this evening provides you with a small flavour of what's on offer here at the school and gives you some insight into the reasons why we've become the largest independent school in sixth form in, in Oxfordshire. Tonight, you'll undoubtedly hear about our fantastic academic, academic outcomes for our students, but more importantly to us, the relationship that underpin all that we do here and drives a lifelong love of learning with all the students. It's often commented that we're one of the only schools where laughter appears on our statement of aims and ethos. And it's of course a great shame that we can't share that atmosphere with you in person tonight. It's incredibly important to us. And of course, whilst evenings like this are important, it's a shame that you can't sample the joy, happiness, camaraderie and work ethic of our students firsthand. However, I do hope the information we provide gives you a broader understanding of the school and our students can give you an insight into what life really is like here at Doverbrooks. We are enormously proud of what we are and what we stand for and the journey it allows our students to embark on over the course of their A-levels with us. I do hope you enjoy the hour that you're with us and thank you for showing an interest in our fantastic school. I'll now pass you over to Alistair McPherson, Head of Sixth Form here at Doverbrooks to get us started and once again, I hope you really have a great evening. Thank you. A very warm welcome from me and thank you very much for joining us tonight and from everybody in the sixth form team. My aim is to tell you a little bit more about life in the sixth form and to give you a flavour of what the sixth form is like. That's where, I'm, uh, where many of us are speaking to from tonight. It looks like a spaceship in the dark. My room is the one bottom right there with all the lights flashing away. We're very proud of our buildings. We think it's a great facility that we have both here and in the art block to tell you more about that later. It's a very warm and welcoming place, the sixth form, and we hope that you'll enjoy it. There, we have over 390 students join us in the sixth form, which is a great many. And as Jonathan says, it's the biggest independent sixth form in Oxfordshire and one of the biggest, I think, in the country for independent sixth forms. And each year, over 140 new students join us from the UK and from all over the world. And one of the great strengths of Doverbrook sixth form is this idea of a new start at a new time in a student's life and the opportunity to meet people from many different backgrounds. We really don't want to be living in a middle class English ghetto. We want to meet people from all over the world to enjoy and enrich each other's educational experience. We have day, we have boarding students, including weekly boarding. And there in front of you is an, is an example of somebody sitting in the maths room and declaiming to the world just how wonderful it is to be here. I promise they're not actors. Uh, some schools are students joined us from last year, many, many different schools, as I say, from all over the world. You'll see in that list 
independent schools, state schools, international schools, really a plethora of different educational backgrounds. And we, are, we take great pride in the diversity and uh, experiences of our students joining us. Really, they come from everywhere. Why do students join us for the sixth form? Well, because of our great magnetism. No, I think they join us because we offer a great many subjects. We'll talk about this more as the evening progresses, but we do practically all A-level subjects here. Small classes, never more than 11 in a class, and frequently not as many as that in a, in a lesson. The quality of the teaching, of course, I'm going to say is outstanding. Uh, but I think perhaps above all is the ethos and environment. Many people cross the threshold of 333, the building I talked about earlier, and they just say that there's something different about the place. There's a sense of camaraderie, a sense of enjoyment and learning, and a sense of being with each other, embarking on a journey together that will lead not just to academic success, but also greater maturity and a sense of being ready for the next phase in life. And that idea of a successful transition from school to university and from being a child to an adult, I think lies at the heart of much that we seek to do at Dover Brooks. The Art Centre is a recently um, a, a new part of what we offer. It's very um, magnificent. I think is the only word to say. Look at the student here, clearly enjoying and relishing and smiling. I don't think anyone's told her a joke from the side. Uh, the Art Centre is just a glorious place in which to study subjects such as art, photography, textiles, and is a marvellous new facility that we've been able to offer this academic year. And there are students working away because the art centre, the art centre has allowed us to expand the offering that we have in 333 itself, because the art centre is only just a few minutes away. But it, we've been able to create more study spaces, and here are students working away and looking intent because we told them to in the time that we took these photographs. So lots of study spaces, lots of nuances. Lots of things going on. I think the flavour of the place can be summed up in the phrase that academically it is very um, purposeful and we do achieve, as Jonathan said, some outstanding results, both, both absolute and value added. But socially it's informal and a great place where people can make that move from, as I said, from student to, to university. And I think social informality and academic intensity lie at the heart of what we have to offer. To say more about the academic intensity and what we offer, here's Andrew to talk about the academic overview. Andrew. Thank you, Alistair. Um, so yeah, indeed, I just wanted to give an overview of uh, the ethos of, of the sixth form um, and talk, first of all, really about our academic approach and I think the thing that we would all stress, um, the thing that we, we would all want to put our finger on, is this idea of the individual. The individual really is the, the heart of absolutely everything we do at Dover Brooks. Uh, I think it's an easy thing to say, it's a harder thing to live, but it really is our, our raison d'etre. It's in our lifeblood, it is who we are. Um, uh, I've been at Dover Brooks for a very long time, and part of that reason is because we can work with individuals as individuals. Um, as Alistair said, we have a degree of social informality, so um, students call us by our first names, we don't have uniforms in the sixth form, but with that, uh, with that sort of social relaxed atmosphere, students can be themselves um, and they can be who they want to be and then we can really work with a sense of academic purpose. So what being an individual involves for, for us as teachers is uh, teachers knowing exactly where students are. So a Dover student will always be assessed, looked after, thought about, and teachers are very keen to know and understand students' thinking. We want to know the strengths that our students have. We'll know the challenges that our students face. In a given lesson, we'll have a really clear sense of what they're understanding, what they're finding difficult. 
but also more holistically, what is it about study that they find hard? What are their challenges? What are the best ways that they learn so we can adapt and adjust what we're delivering and helping our students with? So I think that individual approach and adapting things for the individual is, as I say, really important for us. And that helps it to be much more collaborative. So education, I'm always saying, is not something that is done to the student. It's something that we do together uh, so that students can learn to take control for themselves. And I, as a teacher, uh, and I know other Dover Brooks teachers, and I know our students have a sense that they're collaborating, they're working with their teachers, students are working with teachers, teachers are working with students, and our students really have a sense that uh, we're on their side, that we're doing all we can to help them. So we get on, um, it, it's a big happy family in that sense, and that means that we're far more pro uh, productive, far more effective in that learning process. Students are going to be very active in their lessons. It's, it's not a place where students will sit there in rows and, and sort of stare at a teacher or stare at a board. There'll be a lot of um, working in pairs, being given challenges, students talking to students, students talking to teachers. So they're active in their learning. And that a big part of that really is encouraging students to think. Uh, it's not a case that we just want uh, to cram students full of information. Uh, students will need to know a lot and understand a lot. But we want to challenge our students, make them think, make them puzzle and struggle uh, over academic challenges. And a big part of that then is developing the confidence and the skills needed to tackle A-level subjects, but also preparing them for the world beyond A-levels, uh, preparing them giving them that confidence so they can go off and tackle new academic challenges. So skills are really important. Yes, teachers will be delivering subject material, but we'll also want to help students to learn how to learn, how to become a more effective learner. So that's a summary really of our academic approach. Um, and if we move to the next slide, what you'll see is the thing that Alistair referred to earlier, which is all of our subject options. And as well as that ethos of the individual, of being active, of being collaborative, we want to provide our students with a lot of academic opportunity. So we've got a huge range of subjects. Um, students will have a core program. We ask our students typically to choose four A-level subjects. They often drop down to three subjects in year 13, but they'll start with four subjects. We have a few students who start with three. We have some students who start with five A-levels. There are no option blocks. It means that students can choose any four subjects from any of the combination that you can see there. A-levels can be very new. There are new subjects. A-levels can be a step up. So giving students those four subjects to experience helps them to know where their real strengths and interests lie. So they move to year 13 fully prepared, having the best three subjects for them. So as well as the core program, um, the A-level programme you can see on the screen, we have uh, a very, very broad enrichment programme. We want students to have options, if you like, bolt-ons or choices that they can make for themselves about what they're academically interested in. So if students want to go off and do an extended project, an EPQ, uh, I would liken that to being the closest to being at university without being at university. Students can pick something that they're personally interested in. They'll have a supervisor, they'll go off and do some research um, throughout the, the, the second half, basically, of year 12. Uh, they'll conduct that research, they'll come back and talk to their supervisor, they'll produce an extended essay, and they'll learn a whole lot about research and writing skills. So that's something they can add to their program if they want to. All kinds of other things on there. Uh, I'll, I'll go through a couple of them. Students cannot to uh, take the PLUS program. So the vast majority of our A-level subjects will offer something called PLUS. It's essentially extension, going beyond the A-level, stretching students in a certain subject. But if a student isn't studying that particular subject, they can still do a PLUS option. They can still go along and do stretch physics or stretch politics or stretch maths or stretch English. Uh, we have a seminar program. We try to get our students involved in university programs, lectures. We have Oxford University on our doorstep. Uh, we'll ask students to attend virtually or, or in reality a lecture, come back and meet with 
like-minded, interested individuals and have a discussion about what they've seen. So we have a core programme, but we want a very enriching experience so individual students can tailor their programme according to their particular needs. Okay, so there we see our results. Um, there's Pedro um, practicing. I think he should be doing chemistry. He's probably plotting the school football team. Uh, you can see our results, which are consistent with, with results from previous years. Uh, so as I said, we're extremely proud of what we've achieved, extremely proud of our, our what, we, what you can see there, which is our raw A-level results in which we have some outstanding achievement. As well as looking at the, those raw results, however, the other thing I'd really like to emphasize is our value added. Um, what we're particularly interested in at Dover Brooks and Dover Brooks Sixth Form is looking at the journey. What journey are our students going on? So we want to measure their starting point, we want to look at their baseline, and then we want to see how far they progress. Of course, the students who are joining us with eights and nines at GCSEs will be going on to get the A's and the A stars at their A level. Uh, that, that's the sort of thing we would expect and that's the sort of thing that happens. What we want to see is how much value we can add to students um, from their starting point. Uh, and using uh, research from the University of Durham, we use a, a nationally monitored system uh, and we measure that, that value added, that journey um, that, that our students go on. We're, we're number one in Oxfordshire for value added for our final results, uh, and that's not a fluke that we, we've regularly been number one in Oxfordshire. Uh, we've often been in, sometimes in the top five in the whole of the UK, certainly the top 5% on a, on a very regular basis. So whatever the starting point, um, if students are in our sixth form, we're really helping to stretch them. So that's our value added and our results. Uh, what about the destinations? Where do our students go on to? We have students who go on to uh, extremely prestigious universities, not just in the UK, but all around the world. You can see a list of, of the most common UK universities there. Uh, but we also have students who do, if you like, non-traditional, non-academic subjects. Uh, we have drama students uh, who go off to drama schools. We have huge numbers of art school uh, students who go off to some very successful, um, inspiring uh, art institutions to do art, fine art, textiles. We have students who go to other countries, to places like Harvard and Yale University. So we've got some fantastic destinations and increasingly we're finding some students who are interested in apprenticeships uh, or are interested in apprentice de uh, apprenticeship degrees where they can study and they can actually earn some money at the same time. So that's our destinations. Uh, I'll hand you over now uh, to Ali to talk about pastoral matters. Good evening and thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly run through some of the pastoral support that we have on offer for our students at Dover Brooks. At the risk of parroting my colleagues and what Andrew and everyone else has said so far, the individual really is at the heart of everything that we do. Um, so what is different and what makes us quite unique in terms of the offering that we have is that students, instead of having a tutor and a tutor group, will be allocated a director of studies for their time with us. So this role is much larger than that of a traditional tutor. Um, and those directors of studies will work with those students on an individual basis to look at academic feedback as well as their personal well-being. So they will have an overview of their progress throughout their time with us in sixth form and they will often be a subject teacher, somebody that students have a lot of face to face time with and therefore someone that hopefully knows the students really, really well. Despite this, there is a huge opportunity for students to meet other people through activities programmes, through group sessions with those directors of studies and through the personal development team as well. So personal development can take the form of uh, individual sessions to look at things like their mental health, stress, anxiety, exam related stress, etc. But equally, it can also look at some of those kind of university applications as well. So Andrew and I work very, very closely to make sure that students are supported from both an academic and a pastoral perspective as well. Ultimately, our goal is to ensure that our students leave as happy, well-rounded, confident individuals. And as part of that, we have a really supportive and experienced team encompassed not just by the academic staff, but in the pastoral department, we have 
several counsellors who work with us and we have a pastoral mentor as well. So the aim is that we have both teaching and non-teaching staff available to support students on their journey with us. We also have an excellent boarding team as well with heads of house uh, who will work with the pastoral team to ensure that our students are as successful as they can be. So I will hand over on to Felisa who will be able to talk to you a bit more about the boarding provision that we have. Thank you. Hello, uh, thank you very much Ellie. So I'm delighted to be here this evening to uh, tell you a bit about our boarding provision. Uh, about 50% of our sixth form board with us, so they're a really important part of our school community. Our aim in all our boarding houses is to create a really welcoming, comfortable home from home where our students can study effectively and really flourish as individuals. Whether our students are full or weekly boarders, we really want them to be happy and enjoy our, their time with us. So as you can see from the slide on screen, we currently have three boarding houses for our new lower six. Two larger houses, Islip and St Aldate, and one smaller, more kind of cosy, intimate house, Hayfield House. The houses all have at least two separate communal areas, a kitchen, sort of kitchenette where they can prepare snacks, TV, access to Netflix, DVDs, um, and lots of games. The houses are mixed, so girls and boys, uh, share the communal spaces and then girls and boys rooms are either on different levels or on different sides of the house. The meals, we hold them all in school in the main hall um, and we can cater for pretty much um, any diet that, that students come with, uh, diet, diet requirements that is. Uh, the boarding staff, as Ellie has already covered, work really closely with the pastoral team at school uh, to offer the best support that we can offer um, with the students' well-being always being uppermost. The houses are staffed 24 hours a day. Uh, we've got residential boarding staff, uh, two or three residential boarding staff in each house, and a day matron who's there during the day and can look after students if they're not well. Uh, in addition, we also have a school nurse. I think Ellie may have mentioned that. Uh, students are all registered with a nearby medical centre, so they can easily access a doctor if, if they need to. Oxford's a really great place to be, it's a great place to study, there's loads of opportunities for students, uh, whatever their interests, um, it's a great place for them to become more independent and for their personal development. The houses are all well located, either close to school or in the heart of the city centre, uh, so it's easy for students to access the many attractions that Oxford offers. There's loads more information on our website, there's pictures, there's introductions to our boarding staff, so please do go and take a look there. I'm going to pass you on to Gil now, who's standing in for Johnny, uh, and who will tell you a bit more about the uh, extracurricular activities that we offer. Thanks a lot, Felisa, and Johnny, if you're listening, I hope your voice recovers soon. Um, so yeah, Johnny will talk about co-curricular uh, with three words. He'd talk about choice, engagement and enjoyment. Choice, it's a bit like the, the A-level programme. Our aim is to provide a wide range of options so that students can find the thing that excites and interests them. Uh, and that may be a sport, it may be an activity. You can, you can see a list there of some of the many things that we have. Um, so it may range from aerial silks to knitting to economics to Pilates. The choice is there so that people find something that they can engage with, identify with, they can either develop existing skills or, or develop new ones. Um, and it gives them that kind of independence of choice, like the A-levels, that then leads to the engagement. So whichever activity you're doing, you're doing it with people who volunteered for it, who are excited by it and want to participate as well. So it's often a range of abilities of people, but all are there because they want to be and it's accessible and open uh, of every, to everybody. Out of the engagement um, will come enjoyment. Uh, we see this as a very important way of making friends uh, and doing team sports, for example. Uh, as you've heard in the sixth form, we've got a lot of people starting for the first time. This is their chance to make friends very easily. Uh, it's also a chance just to, to balance studies. There's a lot of studies going on. This is a good way of balancing that. So choice, engagement, enjoyment. Um, the programme is about 
you know, there's, there's many options every week. I think there's over 50 throughout the year. That program will change according to um, different times of year and according to people's interests. So we're, we're constantly reviewing and adding. Um, so, for example, we put uh, MUN, Model United Nations, back in last term. The co-curricular, these activities and sports happen within the timetable. There are two slots in the week. Uh, every student does one. Uh, many do two. Uh, we can do that. Some are done on site. Uh, so something like debating would be done on site. Sports, we don't have the facilities on site for sports. So we take students to superb facilities in the city. Quite a lot are done at Oxford University um, Sports Centre where they can use the you know, superb facilities there. You can see some, some pictures, great things. Um, but we, we use whatever facilities are, are appropriate for that sport and at the appropriate level. For example, uh, we use North Oxford Tennis Club to host our tennis academy. So this was an initiative started a couple of years ago uh, in which we are developing and fostering very high level uh, tennis players to enable them to compete uh, um, locally, nationally and hopefully globally. Um, and we work in, in conjunction with North Oxford Tennis Club to get specialist coaching and training alongside studies. As well as the clubs, um, throughout the year we've got many events and, and again uh, opportunities for students to get involved in different things. We have concerts, uh, we, have, we have all sorts of musical groups and choirs and orchestras and whatever. Um, last term we had, we had at the Sheldonian, which is a superb facility in the, in the centre of Oxford, uh, we had a, a whole school concert, Darkness and Light, uh, with amazing performances, everything from opera to rock, superb. We, also have a musical or play every year so this this year it's be more chill coming up this term and again that's a whole school opportunity for students um, from year seven upwards to get involved so sixth formers and uh, younger students will be working together we've also got everything you'd imagine so things like dv annual trips we have an annual ski trip when that comes back and expeditions every few years so essentially lots of different things which the photos will be showing you lots of chances the main thing for us is that people get involved do something they want to do make friends, learn new skills and enjoy it. Thank you. I'm going to pass you back now, I think, to Anthony. OK, here we go. Thanks, Gil. Um, OK, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit through the admissions process um, that we have at Dover Brooks for sixth form. Um, so if we could move on to the next slide, please. OK, so our admissions journey is deliberately very, very straightforward. Um, what we say is come to one of our open events, whether it's an open evening like it is tonight or more importantly, come to our open event on the 5th of February. Details are on the slide and um, it's a really, really good opportunity for you to meet some of the students that you're going to hear this evening and, and lots of other students that we have to ask them questions. It's a really great opportunity to talk to all our teachers about the individual subjects we offer at sixth form and also just to kind of experience the place and to get a sense of all the excitement that we've been talking about this evening. Um, the open event also has the opportunity to meet with people from admissions if you want to. Felice will be there to do with boarding and there's lots of staff there that you can ask lots of questions of. Um, our admissions journey after coming to the open event um, is really straightforward. Um, we ask you to complete the application form that you can find on our website. Um, then uh, you get invited in for an interview um, with Alastair or if you're from International, you're probably being talked to by Andrew, who you just heard. Um, we then ask for school reports from your current school. And as long as you're making the predicted grades that we require, which is um, a minimum of six sixes at GCSE in appropriate subjects. Um, most of our students get a lot more than that, but that's the minimum that we ask for to be academically successful at the school. Um, we then write off for references, assuming they all come back fine, then we make you an offer and you'll be joining us in September, which is what really excites us. Um, like I said, the open event is on 5th of February, um, but if you'd like to ask any questions about our bursaries or our scholarships that we offer, um, particularly any scholarships to do with Tennis Academy, um, please do drop us a line at Sixth Form Admissions. We have a wide range of scholarships that have closed at the moment, but if you do think that you've missed the boat, but you really, really think you're the right person to apply for a scholarship, of course, drop us a line and we're happy to have a chat. And also, if you think you would like some um, financial support in terms of joining the school and want to understand what that means in practice, again, please just drop us an email and we're happy to talk you through what that means in, in reality. Okay, so I think that's really just the admissions process. Um, and now we get to move on to, to meeting our students. Yes, thank you, Anthony. Uh, we are now going to hear from some of our current students about what life is really like here at Doverbrooks. So if our students would like to turn on their web cameras uh, and their microphones, and I'm going to hand back over to Andrew Gillespie, 
who will be facilitating the discussion. Over to you, Andrew. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And thank you to our students for, for agreeing to do this, volunteering, particularly thanks to, to Brendan, who stepped in at the last minute. So thank, thanks, Brendan, for that. OK, so I'm just going to throw over some questions to you that we've been asked from uh, various people from the audience. Um, how easy is it to make friends? So obviously, we've talked about this lots of new people. It's a big thing for how easy is it to make friends? Let's start with Will. Do you want to kick off with that one? Sure. So um, I think making friends was uh, it went really well. I think. Uh, yeah, I think uh, especially when you have a, a lower school and an international school coming into the sixth form, you think that everyone might already have their sort of friend groups, but it's not really been like that. I think everyone's sort of in the same boat, joining the school at the same time, and everyone's open to meet new people and make new friends. So it's been really cool to meet some new people, and I've made some really nice friends that I, I really like. So that's been great. Brilliant. So it's a, it's a mixture, isn't it? Some students are progressing from, from year 11, but even for them, it's a move up the road to sixth form. It's a new building, new subjects, new teachers often. Um, but Brendan, uh, a lot of students do absolutely new. Brendan, you joined us completely new for sixth form, is that right? So what was that like? I've actually been at TIS. So oh, yeah, actually have, yeah, I actually have a couple of friends here, but in the boarding house near me, I didn't really have any friends. So during the first week, I really got to know my neighbor, so it was fun to do. And then during Christmas, we all gathered up in the common room. And I got to get uh, to know even more people. So it was pretty easy to make new Good. friends and meet old ones. So I think the sense, the sense hopefully is it sense sort of beginning the sixth form journey and all that sort of thing. And so everyone's in the same place and very eager to find new friends. Um, Obviously, you've got friends at other schools. So, so what's interesting is, is how does, from what you're talking to them, how do you think Doverbrooks is different? Or what makes Doverbrooks different? Let's kick off with um, Emily. Do you want to kick off? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think the thing that really sets Doverbrooks apart is the emphasis on like pastoral support, um, because that's something I've really benefited from, um, especially with the director of studies. It means that whenever you're struggling or you need some extra help with like fitting in all of your extracurriculars or whatever it is that you need you can just arrange a meeting and then you feel so much better after having that support so it's just whenever you need it it's available to you which is really good and it means that the environment's also really supportive yeah. anyone else on, on differences anyone got any other views No, okay. I, I mean, the fact the sixth form has got its own environment is it, it, different from a lot of schools, isn't it? So it's, a, it, it's not the whole school in one place. And I think that makes quite a big difference. The fact we have um, so many new people joining, I think, is great. And the fact that people from uh, all around the world. So it's, it's, it's a fantastic I, I, a dynamic environment, I think. Let's talk about subjects. So, so Agnes, do you want to tell us a bit about the subjects you're doing and why you chose them? Yeah, so I'm doing English, history, Italian and drama. Um, I was originally doing textiles, uh, but I moved to Italian kind of late-ish in terms of switching subjects. But um, again, like Em said, it was really nice to have that opportunity. And I talked a lot um, about it with my director of studies. And it was nice to kind of know that when you begin, you're not fixed in those subjects. Um, you get some time to kind of figure out what's going to work for you and you have the opportunity to move. And what, what made you choose those subjects in the first place? I know you switched one, but what's... what's... Um, I just really like them. <laughs> a lot of them I did at, at GCSE, so I kind of knew that was what I was... So has anyone picked up a, a subject that they haven't done at GCSE or, or done before? Will, do you want to get, tell us? Yeah, so uh, I've, I'm doing politics as one of my A-level subjects. And that's uh, it's not offered as a GCSE, so it's a completely new one for me to have as an A level. But that's been it's gone very well, and there's sort of at the beginning of the year, you know, everyone sort of has a speeding up so that we're all on the same page as we didn't have it at GCSE. So that's been really good, and I really enjoyed my lessons. So. Yeah. And what made you choose that one? Um, well, I think just my interest in politics aligns really well with the A level itself, and I think that being able to study it as an A-level is a really cool opportunity that I, I really like, so I, I sort of jumped at politics A-level. Yeah. So obviously, you know, some subjects, biology, chemistry, maths, people have studied before use it, but uh, um, there are many ones which might be new. Psychology is new to a lot of people, politics, philosophy, 
um, business economics. So a lot, there's a lot of options here to, to start um, right from the front from the beginning. Um, Emily, do you want to talk about subjects? What, what, what's driven your subject choices? Yeah, so I'm doing biology, chemistry, maths, and then REP, which is religion, ethics, and philosophy. And um, I want to go into medicine, so that's why I've chosen the science-y, kind of maths-y route. Um, but I also really enjoy REP. I did it at GCSE level, and um, the same teacher teaches it at sixth form, and I find her really engaging. And I really love our lessons. So it's really nice to have a blend of the essay subjects and then also all of my sciences, which I really enjoy as well. Um, biology is probably my favourite one and um, I find it really fascinating. I think it's just it's just the thing that I enjoy the most because um, I love, I think everything fits together so perfectly and um, our teacher is really engaging as well and um, I think we're all kind of in the same boot in the same boat in biology because we're all like just really drawn to the subject so it's really nice being with people who are all interested in the same thing as well. That's good that's an interesting mix with the REP with the, the sciences does that give you a perspective on the sciences? Does, does it... um, yeah it's really good because uh, medical medical applications um, in the interview they have an ethics kind of section so it's really good to have knowledge of ethics and I think it's going to help me be a better doctor because I'll have a different kind of perspective on the sciences as you say to to be able to help people and understand the better. Yeah have you been getting uh, just support on the, the medical application so that's? Yes a lot of support I actually I spoke to Shanti who's the biology teacher last summer um, because I only recently got interested in medicine and she had lots of advice for me on the admissions test, which I didn't know anything about. Um, and actually, I contacted Nita, who does the Oxbridge application. She's also a maths teacher. And um, she's arranged a, a kind of a speaker to come in to talk about the applications test as well. So there's kind of support from teachers across the whole school in for every student. So it's really amazing that the really wide range of support that we all have access to it's great right and then and then brendan your your if i forget this right maths and physics is that is that your world yeah i've got maths physics computer science and then economics which was kind of a one-off because i knew i wanted to do sciences but then i didn't want it all to be formulas and calculations so i chose economics because my dad worked in that field and i wanted to not be like understand when he's talking about his work and stuff and then as for favorite i have computer science like ever since i started in my old school before this i just fell in love with it because i grew up around video games so it's just like my life story so, so is that is that the, the the future is that what the future holds for you doing yeah the future definitely holds computer science in it yeah, and um, video game is that is that linked to EPQ? Are you doing an EPQ link to that? Yeah, I'm actually doing my EPQ on. Uh, well, I'm making a video game because I'm not really big on research, so I'd rather be hands on with it. And as I'm doing computer science, I get some help from it as I learn. All right. So you actually you actually producing a game? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So the EPQ is, is the extended project. It's part of the academic enrichment that Andrew Copeland was talking about. Uh, and and you can do, as you said, a kind of research project, or or you can produce an artifact. Um, Emily, am I, 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 well, will you do an EPQ? Yes. Yeah, I'm doing an EPQ. Oh well, the EPQ. Um, yeah, I think it's a really nice opportunity to sort of get a chance to do what you want to do. It's, I mean, it's a very independent study, so. There is, there is, a, of course, there's support as well, but it, you have your own chance to do something that's not directly in the A-level curriculum. So you can uh, go down any road you really want, and that's really nice to have that opportunity to do that. And you, you, you do research over time, and then eventually you either create an artifact like a video game, or you have a, a more research paper type essay at the end. And, and the title of yours? Uh, mine is about w whether the law effectively develops to protect people over time. Okay. And again, how, how did you end up with that title? Um, well, I suppose it's not been my title the whole time. Uh, in, in the EPQ process, you sort of change your title quite a lot. Yeah. And 
evolve as you uh, learn more about the area and what would best fit your question, that sort of thing. But I've just always been interested in laws and the politics side of it, and I thought that was a really interesting question that would be a good to write a, an extended sort of bit of research on. So from what you've said this evening, do you see yourself ultimately in, in politics or human rights or sort of Maybe. that sort of thing? That would be, I, I would be very happy in that field. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and then Emily, are, are you, I think you're doing one linked to, to your, your medical issues, is that right? Yeah, I am. Um, well, Shanti, the biology teacher, encourages all of the medics to do an EPQ um, because it's good for the interview. And I'm doing mine on to what extent radiation sickness is a pleasant way to die, which obviously is not a very pleasant way to die. Um, but it's really good because um, I'm looking at the impact that radiation has on cells and then the body and then society. I'm looking also into the ethical issues with um, kind of the use of the atomic bomb and stuff like that. So it's, it's a really good way to blend all of your subjects and also kind of extend your knowledge beyond the syllabus. So I really look forward to all of my EPQ lessons because it's um, reading what you're interested in and then also sharing your findings with your class. And yeah, I find it really fun. Yeah, that's good. And, 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 and useful skills. And, and, you, and you've described already that you're often evolving before you get to the final thing you're going to research. Yeah. And you're, you're doing a lot of independent work and you're getting support. So I, I think it's very good kind of university prep stuff. Um, you've all mentioned, I think, at various points about director of studies uh, um, and the role of director of studies. And, and um, Ellie mentioned in her bit about it's, it's not the same as a form tutor. So, um, Brendan, do, do you want to talk a bit about your director, that, that, what, what director of studies does? Yeah, I think I got pretty lucky with my director of studies because it falls right in line with what I do. He's my computer science teacher and then he's my supervisor for my APQ. So I can really ask him about anything I have with either the lesson or my APQ or any problems I have regarding school life. And they'll also be translated to uh, the boarding staff. So I'm 24 seven, I have support from him and the boarding staff. Yeah, brilliant. I, I actually hope, hope it's not luck in that in that what we, we try and match you up with the director of studies who's got the same sort of interest in you that you have. So we, we look at uh, what we know about you and try and match. Now, Agnes, we haven't heard from you for ages, Agnes. So um, somebody said earlier, I can't remember, we've got no uniform, there's no prefix, we don't have a detention system. This is kind of very different from, from a lot of uh, um, schools. Um, and I suspect parents are going, well, what, what's behaviour like? What, what, how, does, how does this work without all of these things? So tell us about behaviour and things like that in the sixth form. Um, I think it kind of, behaviour is never really like unruly because there's kind of a mutual respect between the staff and the students. Like um, it's been mentioned that we address staff by their first name and things like that. You feel like there's a trust and like a balance um, and that I think is what makes it such a nice environment and yeah, so friendly and like calm. <laughs> calm, yeah. <laughs> but why, why do you use the word calm? It's interesting, right? I don't know. It's just never, it's like uh, within the school, it's a super nice environment um, between everyone, between students and students and staff and things like that. It's, it's always a nice place to be, basically. That's good. Good to be a nice place. OK, we probably need to just move on with time. Homework. Emily, tell us there's lots of homework. Um, there's not a ridiculous amount of homework. Um, as I'm doing medicine, I do have quite a bit of kind of extra work to do alongside my normal homework. So I go to Biology Plus and Chemistry Plus, which are extra programmes that are run by the departments. Um, Biology Plus is for all medics and um, we kind of prepare presentations to give to our class and um, we also listen to our teacher doing presentations and um, it's really good to develop our personal skills and stuff like that and um, find the areas that we're interested in in medicine. Um, so next week I'm doing a presentation about the pillars of medicine, uh, medical ethics, which I'm quite excited about. And um, I also do Chemistry Plus, which we only just started recently, but um, all of the PLUS programmes have started this term, apart from Biology PLUS, which started last term. And it just means that you have an extra kind of area to channel all of your 
um, kind of uh, interest in the subject into. I know Will does. Do you do Geography Plus, Will? Yeah, Geography and Music Plus, yeah. Yeah, and um, they're just, they're really interesting. And it means also you are doing extra work for those, um, but it's work you're really interested in. And it's not only just good for your personal enrichment, but it's also good to put on your uni application, stuff like that. So our school really supports us to develop as people and to kind of pursue what we want to in the future. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to try a smart link. So, so it's about choice, engagement, enjoyment, which is what Johnny said about co-curricular. So lots of choices on the academic side for you to, uh, we help make sure you pace it and you balance it, but uh, to, to go as far as you want to go. So there's my link to co-curricular. Um, let's have a quick whiz round co-curricular things that you do. So, so Will, what, what are you doing outside the uh, studies? Um, so uh, I'm involved in uh, one or two music things. So jazz band, folk <laughs> group, pop group, mo mo most of them. I'm, I'm the Gaudi Armas, the choir. Most of them I'm involved in, which is really nice. I really love that. And I also play football and basketball for the sports teams as well. So that's really cool to get to play with my friends and that's I really like that yeah it's great. Agnes what are you what are you, what are you up to? Um, I'm in the musical at the moment and also in school council. Okay is it going to be good the musical? I hope so yeah. But there were the bit at the children it was brilliant they're the excerpt. So um, Brendan? I'm doing rock climbing which is a first for me and at first when I got to the top I was like really really scared but it was actually really fun as well so i hope as the term goes on i get better in it and less scared where'd you do that oh uh, i think we went to oxford brooks, oxford they brooks had... yeah they've got an amazing wall haven't they yeah 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 again, that's again using using some great facilities and then um emily you've got the the, what, the choir is that right uh, yeah, I do choir. And then I've also just set up, well, I'm in the process of setting up a medical um, book club, which I've been supported to do so um, by my biology teacher. So, Brilliant idea. Last question for everybody, then we're done. Um, what have you gained in your time in the sixth form? Pick it out and go across the, my screen. Agnes? Um, for me, I feel like I've gained a lot of independence. I kind of um, was sort of used to just leaving all my homework to do at home um but i've really like benefited from the fact that i can work uh in study periods in school and also the library and the the study room which is new this year um they're both open after school so i've really enjoyed having that um like separation um and with that comes like learning to manage my own time and also learning to ask for help um because if you're working in school and stuff there's always people you can ask or you can send an email um and kind of having the initiative to do that has been really important and beneficial to me i think that's really interesting observation kind of learn, learning to ask for help that's just well um well i think i agree a lot with agnes said i think having the independence has been really nice and it's something i really enjoy and i i love having the options to do whatever i want basically so being able to sign up for all the clubs and all the the plus programs and have a wide range of a levels has been really liberating i think and having that options is what i really enjoy and helping me do what i want to do is been really cool okay emily anything to add um not really i've really enjoyed being able to narrow down my subject choice to um things that i really enjoy and also meeting new people that have similar interests to you because um, all of my lessons have a really wide range of new people so it's really nice to meet new people and people who are interested in what you're interested in. Good stuff. Brendan? Uh, I think I, the thing I gained most was probably independence because I think I'm the only one here that moved away from my parents as boarding so I really got to learn how to live on my own, do my own chores and then the last thing was making more friends compared to this I got expanded my circle so it was really fun that's good thank you everybody thank you for your contribution i'm going to hand you back to lisa now I'll hand us back to lisa for q a i think thanks team. yes thank you so much everybody that was absolutely brilliant and actually you've covered so many of the uh, questions that have have come in anyway so um we are going to go
this your our Q&A session. We've got a few more questions to direct to some of the uh, teachers who are still here with, with us on this panel. Um, and joining our panel today, we've got the Vice Principal and Head of Sixth Form, Alison McPherson, Vice Principal and Academic Director, Andrew Gillespie, Deputy Head of Academic, Andrew Colclough, Head of Pastoral, Ellie Bartlett, Head of Boarding, Felisa Diaz, and Head of Admissions and Registry, Anthony Bounds. As mentioned earlier, we're sadly missing Jonathan Richards, the Director of Sport and Activities, but as you heard from our students, there's a very good coverage amongst them of uh, co-curricular engagement, so they can hopefully field some questions about that. So our sixth form students, Agnes, Brendan, Emily, and Will, will be on hand too, should you have any questions for them specifically. So thank you to those who've submitted questions so far. If you've got any others as we go through the Q&A, please submit these using the question box. And in the meantime, I'm going to start running through some of the questions that have come in. And the first one is, what is the split of borders versus day pupils? So I'll fire that one over to Alistair. Uh, yeah, I think, that, to be honest, there's a slightly more day students than borders. It's a good mix, to be honest. You can't absolutely guarantee that anybody will be in will be in, fall into a particular category, especially if they're UK students. Some may be boarders, some may be day students. Just depends where they live and the ease of travelling in and out of Oxford. Uh, and also, as I said earlier on, we have weekly boarders too. But obviously, our international students, unless they are flying in by private jet on a daily basis which actually hasn't happened yet, will all be borders. So approximately, I'm going to say it's 50-50. It's probably slightly more day students than borders, um, 55, 45 for the sake of using two numbers, but slightly, but it's a good balance, a very good balance. Brilliant. Thanks, Alistair. Um, and another question that's come in is, how many lessons per subject per week do the students have, and how much self-study time per subject? So I'll direct that one to Andrew Colclough. Uh, students in year 12 will, as I've already said, will take four, typically take four subjects. Um, for each subject, for each A-level subject that they're undertaking, they'll have four lessons per week. And uh, the lessons are an hour long, although there's one longer lesson, one hour and 15 minutes. But it flies by. Um, I'm looking at Will, who I teach, to see his reaction when I say that. Um, so uh, four lessons, uh, typically an hour, one, one of one hour and 15 minutes. In terms of independent study, we say roughly for, for every hour of lesson that you're doing, you'll be doing about an hour of independent study. So for a given subject, students doing about four hours uh, for one of their A-levels, and then they would be doing about four hours of preparation. So. Homework work is um, sometimes pre-preparation, preparing for the next lesson. Uh, it's uh, consolidating your work and, and then having lots of lovely A-level questions fired at you for you to practice and develop your, your skill and your knowledge and your understanding. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and another question, which I'm also going to direct to you, Andrew, is uh, if a student isn't doing well at a subject, what academic support is available to help them? Oh, I like that question. Um, I like the not doing well. I think the first thing, and, and we've, we've heard the, these magic words, director of studies mentioned quite a few times this evening. I think the first thing I would say is what we'd want to know is what, what exactly is, is not doing well? What do we mean by not doing well? So the, in, the individual's in, important. We want to know our students and understand them. Um, and we want to understand in what way are they not doing well? Um, we want them to understand in what way they're not doing well um, and exactly what that means. So is that struggling with the subject? Is it finding a particular part of the subject? It, but also, it, or is it about study skills? That's where the director of studies can be quite important as a link person. Um, they'll have an overview. And, and if there are patterns, maybe across subjects, it's about note taking or it's about logic or mathematical skill, we can then best direct our support. So director of studies will be very helpful. Um, Individual subjects typically hold subject clinics, lunchtime, end of the day, uh, clinic slots. Teachers' departments are very approachable as well. So in a sense, a lot of that support can happen within a lesson because we have small groups, it's all about the individual. But you can also go along to a clinic and get some support or you might be nudged or heavily nudged as a student to come along to a clinic and, and get some support. If you need some specialist support or some more specialist support, uh, we might refer you on to our learning development team and they could spend even more time with you focusing on 
particularly study skills, um, things that you as an individual might want to develop. So there are lots of different layers um, of support, lots of different kinds of support to help get the best out of our individual students. Brilliant. Thanks, Andrew. Another question that's come in, and this is a good one for Ellie. How do you support students struggling with anxiety? It's actually a really difficult question to answer because, as you've probably gathered, it depends so much on the individual. First and foremost, it will be a meeting with the student, also with the director of studies, um, to ascertain kind of what the root cause of that anxiety is and whether it's subject focused, exam stress, whether it's medical, whether it relates to a special educational need, and it'll be kind of pinpointing the root of that. And depending on the root cause of that anxiety, we would kind of direct them in different directions. Um, but on the whole, kind of talking to subject teachers, liaising with parents and keeping an open dialogue between home and school is really, really important. Some things we might do will be exit passes. We might put together a special program so that students have a safe space to go to. So they have kind of code words if they need a time out. Um, but as I said, it works entirely based on what works for that individual and try and get them back through the door. Sometimes you might need to have a phased return if the school days are too intimidating for them. But there is a whole team behind them, director of studies, the sick form team, as well as that dedicated pastoral support. And equally, we can refer them on to our school counsellors, our pastoral mentors, or we can signpost them down the medical route as well if necessary. Great, thank you, Ellie. Uh, one question that's come in, and uh, this is going to be a good one for Will in Johnny's absence. Someone has asked, is the sport that is played competitive against other schools? Um, well, I, I think so, yes, but and no. But we have, so for the sports I play, football and basketball, we have two sessions. So we have a squad team session and we also have a fun session. So if you want to play in the school fixtures you can play in the squad session but if you just want to play football or basketball with your friends and have a good time and not play in the fixtures and not want to be in that in a competitive environment there's both options so if it really depends on what you want to do if you want to play matches you definitely can and if you if you just want to play the sport for fun that's also an option as well brilliant thank you will um, and someone else has said, what non-sports activities do you offer and how often can students participate in these? And obviously, we've heard about a wide variety of uh, activities that you guys take part in. But um, how often do you do some of these non-sporting uh, activities during the week? Um, so we have two activity slot sessions where most of our extracurricular activities go in. So we, on a Tuesday, we have a session on a Thursday as well so we have two chances and the nice thing about that is you don't have to do the same thing on a Tuesday and a Thursday so for me I get to do ba uh, basketball on a Tuesday and football on a Thursday so having the choice of doing two separate things means you can do two things which is really nice so you don't have to lock into one. Brilliant thank you Will. Someone's asked if you're a boarder where do you do your homework? Now this could go to Felisa but actually Brendan let's ask ask you where do you do your homework as a boarder so uh, i mostly do my homework in my room because my room and i share pretty similar subjects and then my neighbors also do the same subjects as me so we basically gather up in our room or theirs and we just like do our homework together but i also sometimes go down to the common room i also meet the the other people I have in my classes and we get in a group together to tackle the really difficult problems. Brilliant, thanks Brendan. Um, and Felisa, is that uh, fairly standard or do the boarders have other options for, for where they can do their homework? Uh, yeah, I think Brendan's covered it in the boarding house. Uh, all students have a desk in their room, whether they're in a single room or if they're in a double, there'll be two desks. So each student has their own desk. And like Brendan said, students can work together in groups um, in the common areas. Um, that's obviously in the evening. During the daytime, they have access to the boarding house, um, but there's lots of places in school where uh, they can study and there's a library uh, with lots of, 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 sort of study sessions as well. And there's a study centre, I think, at the top as well now. 
Fantastic. Thanks, Felisa. Obviously, be mindful of time. I think we can only squeeze in one more question. Those that we haven't had time to cover, we will be following up with uh, the people who ask the questions in the chat box. But uh, one question, this is a good one for Anthony as we wrap up and think about next steps. What do you look for in an application and personal statement? Okay, I'll be brief. Um, we're looking for you to give the best indication of yourself. So the personal statements are very much to you to talk about your achievements, your enthusiasms, your hopes for the future, what's happened in the past, anything you're really proud of, um, anything you're nervous about, about, you know, changing schools and looking at A-levels. It really is your opportunity to talk about yourself. As we've talked about today, Dover Brooks is all about individuals. We don't tell you what to write in your personal statement. We just ask for you to write something that you would like us to know about yourself so that when you are talking to Alistair, he can talk to you about that as much as the any, many of the things he talks to you about. Brilliant. Thank you, Anthony. So that, that's all we've got time for tonight. And thank you again to all of our panelists and our students for their talks and to our audience for your questions. If you would like to get in touch to arrange a visit or you've got any further questions, please contact our sixth form admissions team at sixthformadmissions at doverbrooks.com. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us, and we hope to hear from you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.